from its hay cart arch to the hay wain art. The swan in Fittleworth has always had a curious draw for those of an artistic bent. It's always had an atmosphere about it, you know, which is charming. You walk in and straight away you feel immersed in everything that's been going on over the past 600 years. It began as a simple coaching hostelry in 1382, but quickly became a place where centuries of art, literature and music are well met. What this wall represents is a harking back to an age when you could barter your talent for food and lodgings. Each one of these oils was done by an artist who gave it to the hotel in lieu of their bill. And there are about 35 in total, each one depicting a scene from the local area. The people would come down from all around the country. And the time there was a train station in Fittleworth. So they'd step off at the train station, which was no longer here, and they'd stay here. And they'd stay here for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, you know, as long as they wanted. And the chap that owned the pub at the time was very mad on art. It was his big love, his big passion. So he struck a deal with them and he said, if you stay with us, paint me a picture and leave it when you go. And that's what you see at the top of the bar. The practice had stopped by the 1920s, but not before the hotel had acquired quite a few works. Among them, an original constable of the River Rother. Not John Constable, though, his brother Golding. As you walk around these incredibly narrow and incredibly low 14th century corridors, you can almost hear the strains of English music. Edward Elgar was a regular here at the hotel, and Hubert Parry, who composed Jerusalem, stayed here and signed the guest book. Did those feet in ancient times rest upon one of the swan's beds. Parry recorded his rest at the swan musically with A Song to the River in one of the three visitors books dating back to the 1800s. Sadly, all but one passed into collector's hands a decade ago, including the one that bore this message from Rudyard Kipling after he stopped over on a long drive in 1909. Although his handwritten missive is long gone, the words of his jungle book adorn the beams and are part of the fabric of the hotel. Oh, thank you very much. Well, all this art seems to have inspired the regulars over the years. In 1924, in the Swan, the ancient order of froth blowers was formed and at its height it had half a million members worldwide raising money for needy children. But it all came to an end and the group was disbanded after the prohibition movement gained influence in Parliament. There's a line in one of the bits of literature we have written about the pub back in the 1900s and it's just a simple line and it just reads something like, all roads lead to the Swan. You know, it doesn't matter where you are, where you're heading to, all roads seem to end up at the Swan. And you sort of feel that's what this place is like. 